Hello, everybody. Uh, my name is Steve Honig, and uh, <clears throat> I'm a corporate lawyer by day and uh, try to be a writer at night. Uh, I've uh, uh, published uh, four books of poetry and one book of short stories. Typically, people say they can be obtained where finer books are sold, but you can also find my books there uh, if you just go online. Um, I have uh, four children, ages 19 to 56. I have two grandchildren, and uh, I've written a poem about uh, a short story about uh, my uh, late mother, uh, who uh, taught me a little about food, as you shall now hear. This is called Food Mother. My mother, <clears throat> pardon me. My mother was a first-generation American, growing up on a farm on land now on the bottom of Quabbin Reservoir. Money and food were scarce. Jewish cooking by way of Russia was fondly remembered, if not overly plentiful. None of this explains what my mother did to me when it came to food, nor why I ended up as the object of scorn by my buddies growing up in post-World War II Brooklyn, New York, and why, to this day, I cannot drink carbonated beverages or get down a pizza. My food odyssey started, it seems, before I was even conscious of it. As a toddler, when most kids were eating real food, my mother was emulsifying my diet. The hearts of peas were squeezed out onto the corner of my plate. My meat was pre-cut into tiny morsels. My baked potato was pre-scored, infused with butter, and then mashed in the shell. When I started grade school, my lunch pail was filled with wax paper wrapped in unidentifiable oddities. The other kids just pointed and giggled. I was not allowed soda for reasons unstated. As I grew older, I asked if it was not to protect my teeth from sugars, and I awaited in pride hearing how my mother was caring for me. I was told it had nothing to do with sugar. It was all about the bubbles. <laughs> As I grew, a new phenomenon arrived in the Jewish section of Brooklyn, pizza parlors. All the kids were nuts for pizza. Overworked mothers embraced pizza. I was not allowed pizza. As I grew older, I asked if it was not to protect my physique from deleterious fats, and I awaited the pride of hearing how my mother was ahead of her time in ensuring my health. I was told it had nothing to do with fat. It was about foreign foods. Besides, people always had soda with their pizza. The other kids pointed and sneered. There were, of course, a couple of nearby Chinese restaurants. Where can Jews eat when their holidays forbid the preparation of fresh food? I was not allowed in a Chinese restaurant, ever. As I grew older, I asked if it was not to protect my blood from MSG, a chemical I read about in the weekly reader. And I awaited with, the, with pride hearing how my mother was again protecting me with the tools of science. I was told that MSG was an urban myth, but the smell in those places could kill you. The other kids didn't bother to point or react, as by then I was wholly marginalized. Then there were the things I was required to eat. Chickens, from which I had to pluck the feathers. Chopped fish made by, by my grandmother, who made me kill live carp in the bathtub with a small cudgel. Kippers, I smell a kipper, and fried beef liver, and something I liked until I was told it was inside an intestine. If it weren't for the gum inside baseball card wrappers, there were days I would have starved. I can, however, report a modicum of revenge. Sometime around my 13th birthday, my mother was introduced to chopped suey, in a takeout carton, of course, and turned 180 degrees around. She lusted for Chinese food, and after going with my father a few times, she proudly invited me to join them. I would not budge. It's fine, she said. Don't be silly, she said. Get in the damn car now, she said. I would not do it. The smell, I said. <laughs> New York City in the 50s had a vibrant Chinatown centered around the intersections of Mott and Pell. I came to know it well. We spent many days driving around that neighborhood, car windows open so I could smell the air and discover that it would not harm me. Truth be told, I was secretly delighted at the prospect of finally eating like a normal kid but I made my parents drive me all spring and summer 
before I surrendered, and then only because it got too cold with the windows open. But my mother was not generally reformed in her food strategy, but rather only selectively seduced by, by chop suey. Adjacent to Chinatown was Little Italy, strung out along Grand Street. Several times after the Chinatown success, I mentioned to my mother and per that perhaps we could drive down Grand Street so I could get used to the smell of pizza. Nope. To this day, I can still barely look at the stuff. Thank you.